Hello, this is Dean Takahashi at VentureBeat. I'm here visiting uh, with the folks at NDS today, and they're going to do some demos of Smarter TV for us. Uh, here's uh, Nigel Smith. Uh, he's the Chief Marketing Officer at uh, NDS, and um, you can show us this uh, demo of a recommendation engine, I guess. Um, right, that's mm -hmm. right. Yeah, um, the, the idea being that when you're watching television, um, you can press a button, mm -hmm. and uh, based on your profile, there's things you're interested in. Mm -hmm. The TV will come up and give you... Um, recommendations that are going to be quite interesting for you mm -hmm. so instead of having to go back to the grid and choose mm -hmm. what sort of content uh, what what's the next thing to watch mm -hmm. this will recommend stuff for you mm -hmm. at the back end what you're seeing here is uh, what the operator sees mm -hmm. and uh, you can either the, uh, have an editorial thing where there is a manual control and go in and um, choose what content that um, suits specific programs mm -hmm. um, or um, using um, robots mm -hmm. or sites which will um, uh, do it algorithmically and mm -hmm. give you recommendations here for example the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen the Gini engine recommends X-Men mm -hmm. two X-Men films and the Lord of the Rings mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this makes TV a lot more um, mm -hmm. easy to navigate around for us uh, so people. when you've got 500 channels and uh, this is sort of a better way to find stuff that you might like. That's right. You don't have to think about mm -hmm. it. So it does the thinking for you. Okay. And you can just look through the recommendations and choose mm -hmm. the next thing to watch. And then over here, I guess we've got a demo of uh, sort of uh, a way to get you better advertising, I guess, or that's advertising right. that's more relevant to you. And here, here I'm with uh, Nick Sexton uh, okay. from R&D. And uh, uh, tell us what we have here with sure. these ads. So we have two uh, DVRs working mm -hmm. side by side. And you've got mm -hmm. to imagine they're in two different homes. Mm -hmm. They've been profiled for different uh, types of families, and they're mm -hmm. going to get two different ads. Mm -hmm. where we're actually splicing in ads mm -hmm. into the live stream. We're going mm -hmm. to we'll just watch an episode, the end of an episode of Twenty Four, mm -hmm. and at the end of this uh, break, we're going to see, or at the start of the break, we're going to see a KFC ad, mm -hmm. which has been split split into two. So, in other words, mm -hmm. one family gets one version of the ad, mm -hmm. the other family gets a diff another version, mm -hmm. and we can do all of this ultimately without uh, the ability to have any return path or any form so of So here's the commercial number one for That's families, right. I guess, right? That's right. And this is commercial number two, so still a KFC for ad. For the singles. Uh -huh. At the end of this particular spot, what we'll mm -hmm. do is go back into the broadcast path and rejoin the broadcast channel mm -hmm. so that the second ad in the break is actually, in this case, for Duracell. And the magic here is really that all the splicing of these ads is being done actually on the DVR mm -hmm. in real time. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to be able to predict a long time in advance which mm -hmm. ads go into which spots. You can keep everything very flexible. Mm -hmm. um, at the end of this particular ad, we'll then go back into uh, the, the second part of 24. Um, and that's just an example of how this technology can give you better use of the airtime mm -hmm. uh, by showing more relevant ads to people and hopefully, hopefully making it more interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool, and that, so the ads are actually stored in this box. They don't actually come down from the cable operator. They're really just... Uh, sort of there to be played on the fly. Then, yeah, typically so. you can mm -hmm. store an awful lot of ads on a disc mm -hmm. um, and you can deliver those overnight mm -hmm. or you can deliver them in burst mode to the disc and you, they would stay there for a number of days and be upgraded and refreshed mm -hmm. um, as time goes on. And cool. it just keeps the whole thing lively. Mm -hmm. Cool, thanks. We'll go back to uh, Nigel over here and he's got uh, something else to show. That's cool. Right, this is um, mm -hmm. a, a proof of concept that we've mm -hmm. been working on which is using um, a a device that you could buy in uh, in the street. In this case, we're using an iPod Touch to control uh, your television. So it's acting like a, a super mm -hmm. remote control. So I can mm -hmm. do simple things like uh, uh, change channels uh, by just choosing the program that I want on on here, mm -hmm. and then it will change on on the TV screen mm -hmm. there, which is a rather, rather simplistic uh, uh, use of it. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, you have other benefits than having using one of these devices. Mm -hmm. it's, this device is wireless connected to the router, which is then connected with, um, to the set-top box, which mm -hmm. is wired in. So it's, uh, it's talking directly to the database in the, in the set-top box. So mm -hmm. look, the information I'm getting here is coming from that set-top box. Mm -hmm. And I can go and get uh, information about uh, programs and the, from the guide. Here, mm -hmm. for instance, see what's available on, on this channel. Mm -hmm and it's receiving the stuff from the box. So you really can get better, say, custom information here because they're, they're sort of meant to work with each other as opposed to some of the 
iPhone remote control apps that you would download where Indeed, really not. yes, because we mm -hmm. like the software inside the box, it means that we know how to communicate with the box and mm -hmm. so we can we can we can go there, go there directly. So mm -hmm. um, but we can also take advantage of not just the data that's in mm -hmm. the box but data that's available on the on the internet as well. So, so these little record buttons I see there you can record your show or you can even play something back right there, I guess. Indeed, right? yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, because it's Wi Fi connected or is internet connected, it means mm -hmm. that you can control your box. You don't have to be in the room. You could mm -hmm. be in another state or in even another country and you mm -hmm. can choose uh, programs that you've recorded to play back on the device mm -hmm. or cool. you could program um, stuff to be recorded later that you've forgotten to program mm -hmm. before you've left the house. Cool. And uh, you've got a couple of other things in the other room here. Uh, take a look at those. So we'll just walk on over and look at this first one here. Yeah, what you're seeing here is an advanced user interface by our design group out of uh, Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the, the grid, and mm -hmm. uh, I can control the... So it's interesting that you can see the whole video across the whole screen there, um, and it just overlays on top of it, I guess. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, you can uh, actually see the whole screen, what's going on there, I guess. Yeah. Right, and mm -hmm. we're taking advantage of the fact that set-top boxes are now able to use uh, flashlight mm -hmm. um, as a graphics engine mm -hmm. uh, technology, and um, the HD screens give us a lot more real estate for us to put much better graphics onto the screen, and the response uh, to moving around is, is very, very smooth. Mm -hmm. And uh, the operators were showing this too, and the operators are going to implement this type of technology um, really l like the way that they can mm -hmm. um, provide a, a smooth uh, user interface mm -hmm. that uh, that really is quite quite enjoyable. So it's kind of like you're, you're, it, you can watch your guide now for entertainment, I guess. Right? Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, well, our design group would appreciate that. Yeah, they, they, I think that's what they do. But uh, we have to counter that with, uh -huh. with usability. So on, on one side, we've got our design group. But on mm -hmm. the other side, we have a uh, in Paris. And we've got our design uh, usability group in Denmark. Mm -hmm. in Copenhagen mm -hmm. and they work on how a lot of um, new technologies like social media and and how these guides should work because while it may look good we can design something that looks good if you do it 30 or 40 times off an evening it can get very stale very quickly mm -hmm. so the usability people put in the rigor to make sure that um, these guides really work for the way people want to use television mm -hmm. and I can show you some of that here okay and we're we, 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 we do. <laughs> we're back with uh, Nick here. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. The Nick and Nigel show. Here. <laughs> the Nick and Nigel. Show. So, so yeah, uh, this is another. As Nigel saying, it's just another mm -hmm. example of the usability. This is mm -hmm. sort of a very familiar uh, being able to navigate from a guide and bring up mm -hmm. banners. But if we want to integrate that with interactive content, um, mm -hmm. what we want to try and do is make all of the interactive content that we have mm -hmm. uh, make it contextual. So we don't actually add things which mm -hmm. are. Uh, cluttering up the screen and making mm -hmm. it complicated for users. Right. So, for instance, we have a number of different widgets that we can add in, which are non-contextual. Mm -hmm. This is quite a nice example where we're mm -hmm. using social Facebook. networking mm -hmm. um, to actually find out what else of our, fri our friends are you watching. See what, they're, what shows they're watching is That's what it's right. showing. Huh? Yeah. And a bit like we showed earlier, the, mm -hmm. the opportunity to use recommendations, it can mm -hmm. be automated, but why not also use the network of your friends to find out what they're watching? Mm -hmm. As you can see here, we have a series of comments that are coming up automatically, mm -hmm. therefore integrating social networking into what is really a guide experience. Mm -hmm. uh, this is just one example. I mean, we can go back even further into Let's say if we go to the guide and we mm -hmm. actually go to sport, for instance, mm -hmm. we can also show that contextual, if, what is the contextual link that we would expect here? Well, mm -hmm. catch-up TV is mm -hmm. actually a good example where we can go into an example where we can catch up on all the plays that we've mm -hmm. missed so that mm -hmm. we can actually catch up with the game. Typically, all of this content would mm -hmm. come from something that appears off the internet. Mm -hmm. And uh, now what we've done is bring those two worlds together. So. Uh, what we try to do is not just simply pad out to the guide with lots and lots of widgets, but mm -hmm. make sure that they are relevant to the programming at all times. Mm -hmm. This demonstration is uh, large, uh, a large exercise, but at any one time, we want to just be able to give people one simple remote, and mm -hmm. you would be able to drive this mm -hmm. within about 10 minutes. You'd feel very natural with only a few button presses. Very cool. So NDS basically designs all these things. Uh, the TV operators um, can... Uh, license them from you, I guess, and then um, right. uh, they, they'll be coming soon to a TV near you, I guess. Right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.